Ah, well, 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 and so we meet again. Why am I wearing sunglasses inside? I don't know, because obviously it makes you cool. Um, I don't know how to begin this conversation because it's a, it's a very biased one from, from my perspective, and I want to make sure that I convey my thoughts in a way that essentially doesn't point towards, doesn't point towards one thing or the other, okay? Mental, who played for me, who's a stand-up dude, fucking love the guy, uh, couldn't say anything bad about him, uh, just period, end of story, okay? So everything that I'm about to say is going to be biased on that, on that thought. Um, there's, there's been a lot of conversation happening from, uh, from pros and amateur players and essentially just pretty much everybody in the scene. Um, and, and I wanted to give you my thoughts on that because very early on in this process, when I was on my podcast talking about what I would have done differently coming into the league if I didn't have the scump, if I didn't have um, the formals, or if I didn't really have an opportunity to build a brand quickly and to bring, build, build a brand that's going to, to be talked about in every corner of the world, um, I would have picked, as I said, and I don't remember exactly what the team was, but I said that, look, if I came in here trying to start a brand new brand it, from the beginning, from scratch, I would try to be the talk of the town. And what better way to set yourself apart than to bring in one pro player from the Call of Duty scene and then three outside of the Call of Duty scene? Think about the talk of the, of the night. Think about the talk of the season, right? Like, there's always going to be the storyline that you're creating when you go down that route. And if I would have, and if I would have picked Mental, if I would have picked uh, Explosive and Snakebite uh, from my old Halo team, or if I would have picked TJ, uh, Tej, Lethal, Lix Lixthal, Lethal, Snakebite, and, and Mental, plus a pro player that has been around that, that, that can teach these guys what to do, then you're talking about a team that, one, is filled with champions from other esports, but two, you have a storyline that everybody is going to be paying attention to. Pro players are going to be watching this as like, oh, this is going to be a fucking disaster. No way that these guys can catch up as soon as they step into the game. Like, there's no way. But I'm going to give you uh, uh, three names right off the rip, okay, that you guys have to take into account when all this. Imagine a formal who was a uh, Halo World Champion, came into this thing and people were like, I can't believe he's making a thing. If the issue is that he's not going through the trials and tribulations of uh, the challengers uh, scene or, or you know, he's just switching to switch because he wants to play something else, maybe there I'll give you a, a tiny little bit of, of leeway in having that conversation. That's a conversation that you should have, right? Whether he deserves to be here or not, that's not the conversation you should have. Okay, how he's getting here, sure, maybe, but let me continue. The storyline that would have been created from the beginning, Hex puts together a team of one professional Call of Duty player that's been around from the, since the beginning and three brand new entities that are coming in here that have never touched the game of Call of Duty. So let me finish giving you the formal, Shotzi, and of course, my brother, um, Frosty. Jesus, my brain fart. Okay, that's that would have been the team that I picked. I said it in my podcast. I don't know if people got mad at it or I don't, I don't know what happened, but it was just simply me saying from a business standpoint, simplifying it, what is going to get my team talked about the most? How can I keep up with these, with these organizations and these other players that are coming in here if I don't really have anything new? If I didn't have the brand that I personally have to put into uh, the eyeballs to put into this thing, then I would have gone the route of, of of putting together something. Think about this, right? We don't know where mental is going, right? But the second that we do, that team is going to be talked about. Now, the rumor is that he's going to be on the bench. You know how many people I had on the bench last season that I never intended on playing, and it was just a content play? I mean, I don't need to tell you, right? But I don't, I don't know where it is. Now, obviously, obviously, we need to nurture, support, and make sure that the challenger scene is, is well-documented above anything else. Right above anything else, this last season I was a very, very big voice in saying that we need to put some of these very close challengers matches with people's names who have been around the scene for a very long time on on the main broadcast. We shouldn't separate them. We shouldn't like try to think or or try to protect ourselves from a a storyline that's happening. Challengers cannibalizing the main broadcast on actual starter teams that are that are, that are going about. I, I think that that's the wrong approach. Right now. If, if at any point there is a situation where 
you have a, a brand new dude coming from a scene that's coming in here and he's good enough and a, and a team wants to pick it up, that's not a slap to anyone's face. That's not a slap. That's not him disrespecting anybody. That's just one man trying to put food on his table a different way that he has in the past. Now, Mental has accomplished a lot in Gears of War. And if that is enough for him to say, I want to challenge myself some, some, somewhere else, that's his prerogative. That's his right to do so. The same way that you... Right, the same way that you challengers, that you ex pros or pros that are no longer competing as a starter, that's your choice too. You're not bound to Call of Duty. You have the skill to go play somewhere else and prove yourself somewhere else. Now, if you're saying that he's taking a spot of somebody that's been around for a long time, guys, that's not life, man. And I don't, I don't want to be the one to 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 tear that dream apart. But fair isn't always fair, and it's not about fairness in this scenario. This is just about. One dude trying to make a name for himself on an, in a different esport the way that people before him have made. Okay? It's as simple as that. From a business standpoint, I gave you my opinion. From a marketing standpoint, I gave you my opinion. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big supporter of the challenger scene. We don't have one. It just does the right opportunity hasn't presented itself. Right? But if I was going to, like even then, even now as I sit here right now telling you this, if I was going to have a huntsman, and Andy and I have discussed this. If I was going to have a Huntsman Challenger team, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go with a, uh, I'm going to do what I do best, and that's build brands and build storylines. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to have my team be talked about more than the other teams. That's my job. And if that means that I have to pick one Challenger dude from Call of Duty that's been around for a long time, and Mental, Lethal, Snakebite, and somebody else to fill my Challenger team, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do every single step of the way. And I'm not slapping anybody in the face. I'm not disrespecting anybody, okay? That's just the way that I'm going to go about this thing because I want to make sure, as a businessman, I want to make sure that my team is talked about. That's how fans are created. That's how storylines are created, right? Now, again, very biasly, Billy played for me. I fucking love the kid. I wish him nothing but the best. I was so excited when he announced that he was doing that. Um where he ends up, I don't know. But people are going to be talking about it. I mean, think about this. People are already talking about this dude, right? This dude is, is – is, is, this dude's name is now infiltrating and being talked about on a video, this one, that's Call of Duty. I bet you Jake Lucky does a video about me talking about this. I bet you uh, Tactical Rab does a video about me talking about this. And they're going to offer their opinion. Fact is, the name has infiltrated. The dude has infiltrated. And I think that everybody should just give them a chance. If it wasn't your turn to be picked, it wasn't your turn. Be better. Create more content. Do whatever it is that, need, that you need to do to set yourself apart from every single other challenger that's out there. Is it fair? I don't know. I'm just doing what I know how to do. And you can't blame me for that. You can't get mad at me for that the same way that you can't get mad at this man for trying to put food on his table a different way. Those are my thoughts. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. What's your opinion? Let me know in the, in the comment section down below. Change my mind if you need to or if you disagree with me. But put it into don't don't get mad and type a whole bunch of bullshit. Give me your honest opinion the the, the correct way that's not going to make me tune away because of the way that you approach the situation. Anyway, neither here or there. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.